So it is lecture number eight, and here we will talk about in detail conditional probability, how partial information is changing the probability of an event. So two things. Okay, it might be in recording mode. I think. Okay, okay. I will put it recording this one. Okay, fine. So we are going to discuss here conditional probability in detail. So as I mentioned that conditional probability it just deal with two uh, two things. One is that event under interest or under uh, event under consideration, and under another thing that will come here in the process of defining uh, conditional probability uh, some partial information that one is leading to our conditional situation. The two things always you remember that here, event of interest uh, we had already discussed several times what is event of interest. How to come up with event of interest? It it would be totally uh, coming from the situation or problem itself. Event of interest and second, you have to see what is the partial information given there. Some partial information would be given there so that your probability would be updated, and that leads to our conditional probability. Some partial information would be here. Okay, so that is the situation. Coming to outline of today's lecture, first I would like to discuss uh, conditional probability in detail. Then I will take few examples, and we will see if time permit. Then we, we will go to discuss multiplication rule. It is just one another uh, representation of the uh, definition of conditional probability. Just you, if you try to represent in different way, so there is a, between this conditional probability and multiplication rule is that represents uh, representational difference. So that we will see it. So if you represent in different way. You will come up with multiplication rule, and there there are various application of multiplication rule. We will see it. So coming to conditional probability, uh, how we define it? In last class, we had already seen that how partial inform information leads to our conditioning. Okay, so that we had already discussed that uh, in conditional probability, it uh, provides us with a way to reason out about the outcome of an experiment. It is based on some partial information. There would be some partial information involved in that question. Question. Okay. Uh, Uh, so some 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 of the situation in last class we had already discussed that so if you, you are just uh, rolling two dice uh, successively or two roll of a dice successively then uh, this i had mentioned that this happens to be partial information that some of the rolls is nine so partial information generally is denoted by b and uh, what is the event the, that how likely that uh, what is the probability that first roll is 6 so that is the that is the event of interest so this we denote it a and in last class we had already seen that probability of a what was probability of a just from the last class recall it what is the what was the probability of a here anyone am i audible 1 by 6 and once you come up with this uh, partial information uh, what we define it by b then after that we see that there is a update in probability and what what was the new probability updated probability of a once you are having partial information what was it 1 by 4 so easily we can say that uh, this uh, partial information is positive in sense why because we can easily see that uh, the conditional probability is greater than Uh, the prior probability okay or unconditional probability so we see that uh, the once you are having information about uh, b it update the probability it is increasing the probability of a so that's why uh, sometime uh, most of time you will see that if you are really in right direction conditioning is just helping out to update the probability and actually you are just uh, trying to go towards certainty more Uh, you go towards certainty that means your randomness it, it is decreasing and you are going towards uh, certainness so all these things we had already discussed so in, in today's class we will discuss what is the definition of conditional probability so uh, if you talk about partial information that suppose that we know that outcome is within some given event b uh, that uh, simply call it partial this is the partial information now we wish to quantify the likelihood of the outcome also belongs to some other given event b a okay so once we are having partial information that could be your new sample space for the event a that just we have to uh, how much of outcome those are in b just we try to look so from that perspective we say that our sample space for conditional perspective has been changed now it is just the partial information only okay so that's why we look into in that uh, from the partial information perspective that's why how we define 
probability in this new probability law we define it we are saying it conditional probability of an event given an event p and remember, remember the given event b it must be an event which occurs that means what is it is having a positive probability that means positive that is if it is a null kind of event it, it would be meaningless that means no information null means simply no information so there must be some information that's the probability of b must be greater than zero so if b is given to us and then what is the probability of a we define it through this ratio probability of a intersection b divided by uh, probability of b so you can read it like this way don't read it like probability of a intersection b read it like how much of a is happening in b divided by probability of b what is the probability of outcome of a how much of a probability of how much of a happening in b uh, divided by probability of b probability of happening of a in b divided by probability of b that in that perspective try to we try to define conditional probability of a given b so here we put condition on b that means we know about b that parcel in that parcel information so if you try to convert that in more numeric fashion then you can say that uh, in this uh, empirical approach you are just trying to count how much of outcome of a occurs in b divided by uh, total of occurrence and total outcome which occurs within a so b within b oh, how, so this this is the empirical approach to define uh, conditional probability so you can say that it is a totally new law uh, it is uh, coming due to given partial information so if you ask does this law satisfy all the uh, exams of probability measure definitely so here if you talk about what is the probability of a given b uh, it always falls between 0 and 1 it satisfies first property that this probability measure conditional probability it always falls between 0 and 1 that all exam three exam could be satisfied if I ask uh, what is the probability of uh, <coughs> b given b anyone what is probability of b given b anyone would like to highlight what would be this one is itself because uh, once you are having partial information then your that partial information is defining a new sample space and that means finding the probability of b given b means simply finding the probability of that new sample space and that one is satisfying normalizing condition that happens to be equal to one that means once given b uh, that means you know every of what kind of outcome there are b that means you are b is visible to you completely so that's what it is a very much certain kind of thing so that's the probability of certain event is what always it happens to be one and apart from that there is a third property what does it uh, third property anyone would like to highlight what would be that just borrow it from the exams of probability of uh, that elementary probability so say third property it says that if you are taking any two event which happens to be mutually exclusive that means if you are taking a a1 and a2 and which are mutually exclusive then how you can find conditional probability of a intersection a1 intersection a2 given b it would be just equal to summation of probability of a1 given b plus probability of a2 given b remember that here condition you are putting that a1 and a2 are mutually exclusive there is no common element in b with respect to b uh, our new universe is b that's why we try to see in b if you try to see intersection of uh, a1 and a2 at least there is no common element then we apply this sum rule this mutually exclusive so also conditional probability will satisfy all these three properties and that's where the conditional probability is giving a new probability law you can call it so here we will take few examples like <coughs> take a coin and toss three times that means we are taking three successive uh, coins and we will define few uh, events here like this way so and here i'm not saying that which one is the partial information which one is the so anyone may be partial information any okay so we toss a fair coin three times and we used to find the conditional probability of a given b what does it mean simply it will say that b is the partial information if an, another person is coming find the probability of b given a for that uh, a would be the partial information so that's why it is very much uh, what we call uh, call relative in sense so whichever you find uh, 
first you can take that as a personal information okay so here a and b are defined like this way a is talking about uh, event events having outcome uh, more heads than tails so tell me what are the outcome in a and b is talking about first toss is head so a is talking about more heads than tail so what are the outcome here anyone so head head <coughs> head 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 then head head tail yes yeah, so, so we have to point out all those head tail head tail head so all these so as i have already told that always try to visualize what are the possible outcomes there in the event so always visualize go through the event and what is this b event it is talking talking about first toss is head that means head then three two places are vacant to you you can take it head 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 uh, take first head head, head. Head, head, head. <coughs> head, tail. Head, head, tail. Head, tail. Head. Head. Tail, tail. Do you see any other possible thing? Do you see any other? okay so these, these are the outcome in that event b so you just uh, verify it and what is the sample space so again i am going through that uh, probabilistic modeling approach that in our step one we have to specify all the possible outcome and hence we are getting sample space so this is the sample space easily you can see that cardinality of this one would be uh, two to the power three eight eight number of element would be here sorry uh, yeah, eight number of element one two three four five six seven eight because we are having three box what principle of counting will act you know that two times two times this two times two to the power three so through that you can count total number of outcomes in this sample space okay next we have to define what are the event of interest so a is talking about more heads than tail so this outcome would come in a and b is talking about first toss is head then this outcome would come so we are having event of interest okay after that we have to find the probability of directly we can find probability of first uh, outcome we can find easily so very easy to find probability of outcome easily so each one will have what would be probability of head 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 anyone what we will be probability of head head tail 1 by 8 all are equally likely here uh, the uniform law is acting here so that's where every outcome will have the same probability all will have the same probability so through that you can calculate probability of a what would be probability of a how many outcome you observe four outcome so you have to um, uh, add 1 by 8 4 times so that's why 4 by 8 you are getting that one is the probability of a and likewise probability of b is 4 by 8 and uh, how much of a is happening in b i am saying that i am calculating probability of a given b how much of a is happening in b then this is this is in a which is happening in b this is in a which is happening in b this is a in a which is which is in happening in b that's why what would be probability of uh, a given b it would be just 3 by 4 directly calculated don't take to apply all those calculation just say the, how much of a is happening in b and uh, just uh, uh, out of four three of uh, three of uh, three outcome of a are in b so that's where the probability would be three conditional probability would be three by four so in that approach you need to calculate uh, we will take few more examples this would be a little bit complicated here. Uh, smartly you have to design outcomes and then you will come up with uh, probability of event of interest. So what is the question? Question is coming like this way. Uh, there is a con conservative design team. We call it C. And there is an innovative design team. We call it N. And both team has been asked to separately de design a new product within a month. This is 
within a month okay and from the past experience that you can call it partial information uh, we know that we know that probability that team c is successful is 2 by 3 probability that team c is successful is 2 by 3 probability that team n is success, successful is 1 by 2 probability that uh, at least one team is successful is 3 by 4 so these are the given uh, prior information based on that uh, we have to conclude it that uh, if both teams are successful then the design of team n would be adopted so this another information and we assume that exactly one successful team is uh, a successful design is produced only one exactly one successful design is produced then what is the probability that it was designed by team n so easily we we first we have to come up with what is the outcome of this experiment so outcome in, we are defining in different segment so there are four possible outcome would be here with respect to this experiment uh, so corresponding to these four combination of uh, how we will define outcome we will define our outcome through combination of failure and success of these two teams so these are the outcome we are defining in different way ss is talking about both teams succeed ff is talking about both team fail sf is talking about c succeed and fails that's why s is coming first c succeed and fail fs is talking about c fails and uh, success so these are the four possible outcome uh, we come up with so we are having a sample space now next we have to design uh, event of interest and we have to come up, come up with the probability of uh, each outcome as well so here if you talk about event of interest what is event of interest so here it would be uh, c is successful first event of interest would be c is, c is successful that we denoted by a1 c is successful when c would be successful that means when s is coming first time SS, so when both teams are successful, then definitely by default C would be successful. When SF is there, that means in this case also C is successful. And now we are defining another event A2. It is talking about N is successful. What does it mean? When both teams are successful by default, uh, N would be successful. And in FS, here N is only successful. Okay. Now we are defining third event A3. Um, how it is? It says that at least one team is successful. What does it mean? at least one team is successful either both would be successful or one would be successful here or another would be successful so that's where uh, uh, that we event we are calling it a3 so we come up with event of interest those are needed in order to solve this uh, problem now uh, we try to calculate probability of uh, each outcome from the given information okay yes you can see that outcome has been changed so what is the probability of a1 a1 is talking about just look into our, what kind of thing you can see in a1 it is containing uh, <coughs> SS and SF. Anyone would like to say that whether SS, do you see any common thing between SS and SF? What are the outcome? SS and SF. C is successful. You observe C is successful. Okay. So some of the probability of this one, it would be 2 by 3. That uh, probability of uh, that A1 is successful. That one is already given. It is 2 by 3. What's the probability of A2 that uh, N is successful? That one is 1 by 2. That's, so simply if you, I told that uh, SS is talking here outcome basis. We have taken uh, SS, FF, SF, FS. These are the outcome of this experiment here. Uh, we uh, intentionally define. So simply we will say that there is no common thing here this ss is talking about two success sf is talking about one success so how you can talk about uh, there is a commonness between the two it is not like that okay so it is totally different outcome this one is totally different it is talking about success of one and failure of this one now this one is talking about success of s and failure of a uh, success of n as well success of c s and success of f here it is talking about success of c and failure of f so th that's why if you talk about intersection it is empty uh, at the outcome level okay that's why directly we are summing the probability and that one is equal to 2 by 3 and here also in the same phrase we are summing the probability this probability and that one is equal to 1 by 2 and what, what is the probability of a3 called what is the probability of a3 at least one team is successful that one is also given 
3 by 4. At least one team, either both will success or one will success. That's why uh, all these three will come together and 3 by 2. And now uh, there is one additional concept is that what what is what is that uh, we are having probability of sample space from the normalizing condition probability of sample space would be what it would be equal to what that means if you sum the probability of each outcome that would be equal to one so how many unknown you are having here one in the term of probability two then three then four and how many equation you are having anyone equation we denoted by roman letter one four so do you get a unique solution it is not always possible but definitely in this situation you will get a unique solution because there are four unknown and four equations so easily you will get a unique solution under this situation and what are those just solve this four equation and you will get probability of ss that one is 5 by 12 probability of sf that one is 1 by 4 probability of fs that one is, is 1 by 12 and probability of F, ff that one is 1 by 14 then what is the uh, desired probability the desired probability it is saying that it is uh, you have to uh, <coughs> uh, select uh, uh, that uh, success is coming from uh, innovative team if both success uh, uh, success is coming from innovative team so you can see it like this way it is difficult to go back at least so this is the uh, desired probability so how we can calculate this probability just uh, you can see how much of this one is happening in here how much of this one is happening in here <coughs> that what is the probability of this one directly you can calculate if you count number then it will be otherwise you just go to definition of this one it would be just probability of fs uh, uh, fs is common here in this inter if you take intersection of these two fs is also that would be probability of fs or what is that probability of fs probability of fs is 1 by 12 divided by probability of some of these two uh, event and that outcome that one is 1 by 4 plus 1 by 12 and in total you are getting probability 1 by 4 that is the probability so you can directly calculate this as well there is no issue you can directly calculate <coughs> this as well <coughs> Not we take another example that bus arrival time. Hmm. So here it is coming like that uh, you have to calculate that uh, uh, if uh, both team uh, come up with uh, that uh, so you can see it like the here problem is coming like this way so here are you able to see the so here you have to find the probability that it was designed by team n when you come to know that exactly one given information is this one exactly one successful team is produced uh, one successful design is produced so when you will get exactly one successful design how you can interpret that in the term of uh, this outcome new outcome how you so what are the possible outcomes ss sf <coughs> fs and <coughs> ff then uh, what is the information says that uh, exactly one design is successful when uh, exactly one day what what kind of event is talking about what kind of outcome is talking about? only this if you take sf exactly one uh, design is true uh, successful and here exactly one design is successful that's why this is the partial information call it p and what is the event event is that is saying that uh, <coughs> event again here you can see what is the event it is talking about uh, that uh, uh, here team n is successful talking team n is successful so uh, that this is the event 
call it a team team n s second s is talking about uh, in uh, innovative team and first s uh, first one is talking about uh, that uh, conservative team so here so here you have to calculate property of a given b so how you will calculate property of a given b how you will calculate property of a given b from the definition of conditional property it will be property of a intersection b divided by probability of b what is probability a intersection b anyone is it clear am i audible or not so is it clear or not what is a intersection here it is just fs and what was the property of fs it was 1 by 12 and what was the property of b it contains two elements then you have to sum up the property of these two and that would come in denominator and finally you will get your desired property that happens to be equal to 1 by 4 so directly <coughs> you have to calculate all the property then you will get uh, this desired property second question is coming with respect to arrival bus arrival time what does it talk about so this morning suppose i caught the bus whose arrival time is based on assumption that bus always comes within first one hour at most first uh, one hour okay but it is equally likely to come at any time interval within this hour okay now i ask you to guess whether the bus come within first five minutes i am asking to guess whether the bus come within first five minute in the absence of any further information what would be your answer your answer would be just you have you know that uh, this one is example of continuous uh, probability uh, then probability of uh, that bus will falls in this interval bus will come in this interval five minutes means you have to convert in hour five minutes means five by 60 hour five by 60 means one by 12 we are converting in hour that means just probability of that bus will come in this uh, hour what is the if there is no any information then it would be 1 by 12 it would be just a, a equal to length of the interval okay if there is no information suppose i am providing information i give you a hint i tell you that the bus actually come in the first 10 minutes then what would be your probability that bus will come in first five minutes anyone <coughs> What would be? I could not listen that. Zero. <coughs> yeah, this is the intersected region. So five minutes. If you try to, hmm. <coughs> it is already given. This is the partial information B. So what would be B here? first 10 minute that means interval you convert in uh, hour so what is the meaning of 10 minute it is talking about 0 to 1 by 6 that means 10 by 60 it would be 1 by 6 and what is a here it is already given a is 0 to 1 by 12 so what would be conditional probability the intersected region uh, through you, you have to normalize it so normalization is coming through the probability of b so <coughs> divide the directly take it like this for probability of a given b it would be what probability of that uh, 1 by 12 you can write it 1 by 12 Anyone would give some another answer? Firstly, anyone? You know, so through simplification, you will come to know what will be probability. Why it is 1 by 2? Anyone? Why it is 1 by 2? <coughs> in the given information, it is talking about that uh, I provided you that bus will come in first 10 minutes came in first 10 minutes and in the first 10 minutes first 5 minutes is the what it is 50 percent of first 10 minutes so what would be 50 percent charge would be there 
what is meaning of 50 percent charge it's 0.5 means 1 by 2 so from there also you can directly calculate it you don't have to calculate all the property uh, all the all the individual property you can directly from this scene you can calculate okay so we have already calculated it is property 1 by 2 conditional property is 1 by 2 but actual property is 1 by 12 less property but uh, now once we are i am providing in further information uh, this further information due to that property has been updated it is more 1 by 0.5 is more than 0 0.08 now there is one more interesting problem that generally we are calling it a radar detection problem it might be very much common in communication anyone may give idea why uh, how flight is traveling how flight is traveling from one place to another place anyone do you know about this uh, radar system all are from electronics and communication i think you should have idea of that at least why you might have already seen that uh, that uh, when our prime minister modi uh, is willing to visit uh, western country that time always uh, taking uh, permission from pakistan airbase so that uh, that uh, flight will pass over that uh, uh, that airways area over the airways area so do you know what system is working there how flight is running from one place to another place anyone and what is the radar system don't know anyone am i audible or not So you, so just you can answer that you, know, you don't know that how flight is running from one place to another place so suppose you want to <coughs> reach from uh, uh, here hubli to delhi so what will happens uh, the flight is running over the uh, airport was the airport wise it is not like the running there would be gap and it will run that radar uh, every airport is having radar every radar system so it will uh, path will be it is like if there is no airport directly in the state line there is no in the in a sky then it will go like this way from here to hyderabad or hyderabad and from the hyderabad to next to uh, path would be something like this way definitely path of actual path of the uh, airplane it would be something like this uh, that uh, flight have to uh, cross over some kind of uh, airport in order to uh, in order to get a reading of flight in radar so that's why it would be a reading will be that air journey would be safe so always it is happening that flight run over some of the airport it is not like that it will so that's why you might have already heard that if you suppose someone is willing to take flight from kashmir to srinagar to dubai have you heard that or not that is story news that uh, <coughs> always that uh, our air india or our uh, indian airways or that department aviation department asking permission from pakistan have you heard that news or not and pakistan is always denying that and so due to that what is happening that route uh, generally they change the route from uh, what uh, it is uh, srinagar to delhi delhi to uh, down no, south uh, something like that from there it will go to the bay. okay have just try to also come up with those news as well so always uh, 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 that is the so radar is playing very important role in um, uh, our uh, air flight okay journey okay it is playing very important so question is coming like this way if aircraft is present in a certain area a radar correctly register is present with property 0.99 if an aircraft is present in a particular area then whatever radar is there in that area it will register reading with probability presence of aircraft with probability 0 0.99 it is not even radar is not giving 100 percent accurate so it is saying that with 0 0.9 and probability if one aircraft is passing through it area then radar will register the presence of aircraft okay and if it is not present then also there is a false reading radar will 
falsely registered an aircraft present with priority point one. Now next, we assume that an aircraft is present with priority point zero five. Then we have to find what is the priority that false alarm. What is the meaning of false alarm? That means a false indication of aircraft presence. We have to find this priority. What is the priority of false indication of aircraft presence? If here you can see that, so easily, uh, what will happens? Here the priority of presence of this aircraft is very very low, 0 0.05. Definitely it will affect. So uh, smartly we have to <coughs> we have to calculate one more priority, the priority of missed detection. That means uh, aircraft is there, but radar fails to register anything. Uh, radar radar register nothing. So fails to register. So there are two kind of event of interest that uh, we are willing to calculate property of those one is this one another is this one so first we have to come up with what are the uh, <coughs> event so we are defining event a and b a is talking about event is aircraft is present b is talking about uh, the radar register and aircraft so just we come up with these two kind of event okay now we consider also their complement so a, a if we an aircraft is present, we denote it by A, then A complement will simply say that aircraft is not present, just we put not there. And B complement will talk about radar doesn't register any aircraft presence. So all, all these are the possible event we have already defined. Now we will take benefit of the information what is given to us. So we have to come up with, <coughs> we have to define sample space. So sample space uh, we will define in the sequential way here uh, so sequential way it is coming like this way so here in the first layer we say that whether aircraft present or not present a a complement then in the second layer of information we say that once we know that aircraft is present then whether radar <coughs> detect something or missed detection so two possibility are there so that's where the, in, it is coming in second layer so what is the question here question is we have to find a probability of missed detection and we have to find probability of false law so how we can find it what is meaning of false law missed detection and second is false alarm. Don't apply here Bayes theorem. I haven't applied here. So in the manner of event, every event I have already discussed here. How you can define misdetection detection in term of all these A and A complement, B and B complement. Anyone? <coughs> okay, see it here then. So here. Uh, first event it is talking about false indication of aircraft present what does it mean that false alarm that means radar registers something but aircraft is not present that means register uh, that radar registers something we denote that event by that phenomena by b and uh, aircraft is not present that we denote by a complement so that's why this joint event is coming b intersection a complement now what is missed detection it is talking about radar register nothing even though there is an aircraft so that is radar does not register anything but aircraft is present radar, radar doesn't register anything that event how we denote it we denote it by b complement because b is talking about radar register something and what is the another here joint <coughs> information it is saying the aircraft is present so that's where this is talking about missed detection so we have to calculate property of these two events so how we can calculate property of these two event anyone further from question it will already <coughs> given the presence of radar is 0 0.05 uh, probability of b given a <coughs> aircraft is present what is the property that the radar will register? 0.99. If aircraft is present in a certain area of the radar, then what is the property that radar will register? It is 0.99. And then from 
just one more information if air false reading that it says if aircraft is not present it is the given apart from that radar register something with priority point one zero so these information are given from the question so just we have to calculate probability desired pro, pro, probability first it is talking about uh, a false alarm it is saying that priority of that uh, radar register something and and aircraft is not present that means joint occurrence it is talking about so how it is happening so it is just uh, uh, what is that uh, actually before that i should discuss uh, multiplication rule here in detail do we have time okay let, let me discuss multiplication rule so you have already seen the definition of uh, conditional property of a given b okay fine they say that it is the ratio of joint property of a and b then that means how much of a is happening probably that a is happening in b divided probability of happening of b so if you simplify further what you will get what will be probability of a intersection b what would be this probability anyone bring it this side Why we are writing probability of B first? I might have written probability of B last, but why I am writing probability of A first, uh, B first? Any idea? You can ask that question. That such question would come from your side. Because we have B is the partial information. We have already aware of B, so that's why B is coming first. If someone is saying that A is coming first, then probability of A will come. Then here it would be probability of B given A. So that's way the same joint probability you can write also in this way probability of someone is saying that no i observe a first i don't observe b first so for that person joint probability it can be written as product of probability of a into probability of b given way b is happening later so it would be same joint probability you can write it like this way there are two representation you can say that either you go for this or you go for this so it is completely based on which one you observe first so this rule actually we are calling it multiplication rule it is just another representation of the uh, definition of conditional probability itself another representation i would i would like to say that same that's why we are defining here uh, it is already given here <coughs> probability of a is given here so simply it implies that probability of a complement is also given here so we know about the probability what is the probability of a complement that one is given. so that's why first we calculate uh, probability of a complement into probability of g b given a complement and just simplify and this is the probability of uh, false alarm and likewise this is the probability of uh, mis detection so you got it like this way so it is just another you got it through definition of conditional probability through another another representation of conditional probability you got it so other thing we'll discuss in next class and further if you have any question you can ask otherwise otherwise i am going to wind up today's lecture it is all already about 45 minutes.